So I'm here to talk about uh, the data availability and validity scheme in Polkadot. Now this, this talk is probably a bit technical for the main stage in 15 minutes at 9 a.m. Um, you end up going to sleep, it's still fine. But I'm, so, I'm gonna try and explain this. So what do we mean um, by data availability and validity? So in particular, we're talking about, about blocks in a, uh, a sharded system. So if you have a, a, a single chain, like uh, Ethereum 1.0 or, or, or Bitcoin, if we have a header and the block doesn't exist, the, the, people, the people will ignore it. If they download the block, uh, full node, and it uh, verifies it, tries to run it, it, it doesn't succeed, it would ignore that block. And of course, full nodes include the miners. And if we have them in 51%ed, if 51% if of our miners are honest, then they won't build on a block that doesn't exist, or is invalid. And so it'll never be in the longest chain eventually. But if you're in a sharded system, like S2.0, like Polkadot, then only a small number of people check the block. The, the set of validators we, which form the consen consensus for the entire system, they don't know um, if the block exists, if anyone has it, the data, or if it's valid, if it makes sense. So I'm gonna sort of explain a bit um, how Polkadot works, so that the rest of this makes sense. So Polkadot is a multi-chain system. We have um, the relay chain and other parachains, chains. And these are secured by a, a set of validators. And the way parachain blocks work is some um, collator produces it. And there's some random subset of validators, all the set of validators. And we sort of divide them between parachains. And this random subset um, checks the block, say it says it's valid and available. They sign this header. The header goes onto the relay chain. And then it's in the relay chain, we count it as happening. In particular, when the relay chain is finalized, which we do by, we finalize by a finality gadget, get Byzantine agreement, then it's final. So we can compare this with F2.0. So what now happens is that, so shard blocks are produced, and then we have a random subset of validators, which we divide between uh, all, the, all the shards. They, they call the crosslink committee. And they, periodically, they all sign a crosslink, which says that these blocks happen, that they're valid and available. And then that goes onto the beacon chain. If two thirds of those sign it, and then the block, it happens because it's in the beacon chain, it's final when the finality gadget, Casper FFG, finalizes it. So this is basically the same. You just change a few words um, as far as this talk is concerned. There's a few important differences. Um, things like um, the cross links aren't every block, the chains are different, more parachains are different in Polkadot. But the only thing that's important here is how many validators. This is the big difference for this talk. So in Ethereum 2.0, you're going for, you know, 100 to 1,000 validators per shard. Um, and in Polkadot, we're, we're looking at like 10. And uh, this is a sort of a bigger problem for um, and basically, this, is, this will be fine as long as we can guarantee that the blocks are valid and they're available. Any, any full node can download them. If that happens, it's fine. So, so how, how do we guarantee this? Well, so this is the reason why we wanted uh, a thousand validators per shard. So what F2.0 plans is to have sort of 16,000 initially to a million validators, all of which sort of have every 32 ethers a validator. 
And um, it's like if we if say three quarters of those are honest and we select say 100, then with overwhelmingly high probability, um, you know, one third of those will be honest. And so if two thirds of people sign to say it's valid and available, some honest person will keep it valid and available, probably a, a whole load of them. And um, then it will carry on being available and valid. But um, it, it's still a sort of small fraction of the entire system that, that's, that's backing, that, that's giving us this guarantee. And sort of the question is, is will we be able to get a million validators? I don't know. So um, if I have, well, maybe, but only if um, some people run a lot of validators, right? So if I have a thousand death, then I should be running 30 validators. Um, but what we really, you know, what sort of a design goal was to make these runnable by someone um, on a laptop in their bedroom. Or, but that doesn't really work so well if I have a thousand death. You see, and I'm not sure how all this is going to scale, but there's like sort of, there's network and computing limitations. And the networking is probably a problem so, like, how many validators can I run on one machine? Well, it kind of depends on how many peer-to-peer -peer networks I can connect to. Can I connect to 30 networks? Um, it's sort of, to be robust, maybe I need 30 connections each, 1,000 connections. I can do that with a server in a data center, probably if the code is good, but probably not in my bedroom. It would crash my router. Um, and... This is why we're kind of worried in Polkadot that we won't get this many validators, so we're trying to design a system with less. But I'd like to sort of point out that because F2.0 has a very similar architecture, um, almost all parts of our, our solution would just apply. So you could use any of them. So what does Polkadot do? So as I said before, we only have 10 validators per power chain. It means we only need sort of um, five to seven uh, signatures on, the, on this block. And the basic idea for validity was to rely on fishermen. So every collator will be a fisherman. There will be no shortage of fishermen. Every full node can just put up some stake. They don't have to lock anything beforehand. They can just run it. And then when they discover a block is invalid, that they're running, they'll report it. And then people check it. And if we discover someone was lying, one of these five to seven signs an invalid block will um, we'll slash them, we'll take away their stake. And we can allow sort of fishermen to stake themselves, we can band them together. If fishermen lie, that they get slashed. But it's like if you're in there, a fisherman, and you want to convince all your friends to join in and say this is true, and this will ensure that we, we check it enough. And if you're correct, you will get a reward. But the problem is, uh, you can't validate a block you never see. And validators don't know that the full nodes never saw it. And even if the full nodes say they didn't see it, and it, it's sort of subjective, we have no way of verifying that. All we can do is after the data ourselves, at which point, if everyone has the data, we're not scalable anymore. And maybe when we ask for it, when the validators ask for it, it shows up. And it's correct. But we don't know, we can't slash anyone. So kind of, the reason this wasn't a problem with, with Ethereum 1.0, with Bitcoin, was because the people responsible for the entire set, the consensus, um, were the same people who kept the data available. And, you know, at least all the miners keep the data available, as do all other full nodes. So what we really would like is to sort of do that again. And we can kind of do this. So there is a solution, everyone kind of, it's an old solution for robustly storing data, and that is you do use erasure coding. So you sort of add some redundancy to your data, and then uh, you divide it into little pieces. And um, even if a large number of these pieces go missing, you can still reconstruct it from the remainder. And so we can use this um, to make the that the whole set of validators is responsible for the availability of every data, with, of all the data, without um, 
overloading any of them. So with the way we do this, parachain validators send a piece of the data to every other validator. And one third of validators, it, pieces belong to a third of validators who don't have to reconstruct. And then we make uh, voting the consensus, particularly in the finality gadget, for which it's the Byzantine agreement algorithm, we need two thirds of people to sign, um, conditional on having all the pieces you're supposed to have. And what this means is that if we finalize a block and we're two thirds honest, then the block is available in principle. Right? We can reconstruct it. So the data, if, if, we, we, were, if, if we are now two, back to two thirds honest, and we'd really like that to be rational, but um, we can do that as well, then um, it's available. But there is a problem here, which it, if you launch an attack, we're going to catch you in the end. You know, if, if these 10 validators sign an invalid bot, we're going to catch them, we're going to slash them. Ideally, that would be sort of a hundredth of the stake in the entire system. Um, but that isn't good enough. So, so what can happen is that the, these guys can send um, sign an invalid bot, they can send a transaction to a Bitcoin bridge that owns a lot of external things, Bitcoin, and tells them to pay the Bitcoin. And this means that uh, if that's more than 100 of the stake in the system, they make a profit. Um, and it, we can't revert it on our chain because we're not Bitcoin. But we can get around this if we have a protocol to catch people quickly. So if 99% of the time we catch this before they pay you the Bitcoin, then only 1% of the time you succeed, the expected cost of an attack, under the stake 1% of the time, they're all the stake in the entire system. It's cheaper to attack the, the, uh, the main chain and the entire system than it is any one, one component. But we need a protocol for this. So what happens is that we take reports of invalidity or this time unavailability, and we get extra people to check it. We choose the extra people at random. This is, this is important. Uh, we actually use a verifiable random function. So the parachain, the, the people validating the, the shard were chosen at random, but everyone knows who they are. So the bad guys can just wait until they own enough, attack the rest, and they're fine. But if random people checking, they don't know. On the other hand, at VRF, everyone can, knows who's responsible. We know who, we should, who should be checking this after the fact. Uh, we know which reports we should be paying attention to, and we can even pay them. And then if anyone claims it's invalid, everyone downloads it and checks. Now, there are other things you could do. You could um, do random text without reports. And there's this, this great um, idea of doing fraud proofs. And there's, there's this paper that by uh, Mustafa Rabasan, um, Vitalik and Sonio, um, at which I saw Mustafa talking about at DEF CON last year, where we uh, do some erasure coding, but we sort of erasure code sub blocks. And then we can check only a sub block and it gives us a small proof. And if we have a small proof, we don't need this escalation. Or we could use uh, succinct proofs to convince everyone of the validity and reduce the only problem then is availability. And so any of these could, um, could be used in F2.0 if you want to do the same thing. So the, one of the nice things about uh, finality gadgets is that you don't have to finalize things straight away. So what we do is we delay on voting on finality until we have all the erasure coded pieces and if, until we leave some time to get reports and if they don't show up, if they do show up, then we have to wait for checks. And then we never finalize an invalid or unavailable block, um, except with small probability, as long as we get enough reports or we had you know, enough random checks. And that doesn't slow block production. There's a bit of an issue with networking. We can't gossip all these pieces, but never mind that. We can solve that. And the result is that we can uh, secure Polkadot with only 10 validators per parachain and still have it as secure. And I think Ethereum could use a similar thing to get, reduce the number of validators. Thank you. <laughs>